Hey everyone, Shabby Gamer here and welcome back to another episode of our WWE 2K16 Universe Mode. Here we are, Thunder on the road to Money in the Bank. Got three weeks left until that pay-per-view. It's going to be an interesting one because someone from either Thunder or Raw is going to walk out of that pay-per-view with the Money in the Bank briefcase. And I do not even know myself who's going to be involved in that. So uh, I'm really hoping the game's got some decent ideas for us because that could be a tricky one. Uh, it's happened in the past before... And I've always tried to change the participants in the match, but if you do that, it sort of takes the, it takes away the money in the bank status away from whoever it is who wins the match. So I'm not going to touch it this year. The game's going to give us who it wants to be in there. We'll play the match. Whoever wins, wins, and uh, we shall deal with the consequences. Right, tonight's card. What do we have planned for you? We're going to start things off with the Thunder Champion Hollywood Hulk Hogan as he takes on uh, the real American Jack Swagger. Then we've got Flying Brian Pillman taking on Savio Vega. We've got Trish Stratus taking on Rosemary, a match that we discussed last week. This is going to be a number one contendership for Sexy Stars Thunder Women's Championship. Uh, match number four is Rick Rude versus Johnny Gargano. Then we've got uh, the New Day, the tag team champions, taking on the Decay at a tag team match. We've got Matanza Cueto, the number one contender for the Thunder Championship, taking on Dolph Ziggler. The man who uh, is very good at putting other people over, evidently. And our main event this evening is going to be our United States Champion Pentagon. Taking on the number one contender, Dean Ambrose. So we are going to watch four matches in this episode. We're going to skip this early one. Hogan versus Swagger. And it was a win for Hogan, of course, the champion. Uh, match number two, Pillman versus Vega. A win for Brian Pillman. That's a good win. I wonder if we should look to maybe move Brian Pillman over to SmackDown. When the Cruiserweight Championship comes into effect. I think there'll be a roster that might suit him quite nicely. Uh, we're going to watch the women's uh, number one contendership match. We're going to skip Rick Rude versus Gargano. And that was another win for Johnny Gargano. Someone's doing very, very well in this universe mode. And somebody I've got my eye on for a potential United States Championship match uh, next month. Or even the game might have their eye on Johnny Gargano themselves. To be part of the Money in the Bank ladder match. Who knows? But let's get straight into our first match in this episode, Trish Stratus versus Rosemary in a Thunder No More contendership for the Women's Championship. And there is confirmation of the match, Trish Stratus versus Rosemary, number one contendership for the Thunder Women's Championship. And I've just said that, but yeah, who cares? It's happened now, let's do it. And here we go. Chicago, Illinois. I'm sure Chicago gets a lot of our events. It always seems to be Chicago in charge all the time. So Trish Stratus makes her way out. And why was this match come around now? I'm trying to remember what happened last week on our show. Um, so last week Trish Stratus defeated Sexy Star, the women's champion. That's why Trish gets this opportunity. However, of course, Rosemary was the former champion. Lost the match, uh, lost the title in a fatal four-way match back at our Thunder Invades Lucha Underground event. Uh, that's why we're giving her the opportunity to try and earn herself a number one contendership once again. So both these women really looking to try and get back in that championship picture. And who knows, it could happen for one of them. Well, it's going to happen for one of them. But whether they get the championship back is a different story. And now the entrance of the one and only Rosemary. Of course, being accompanied to the ring by Crazy Steve. We're going to see Crazy Steve in the next match as well as part of the tag team alongside Abyss. Decay taking on our Thunder tag team champions, The New Day. The New Day, probably our most dominant champion so far in this universe mode. Held the belts ever since night number one of the universe mode. And I must admit, I like this Rosemary. That's a bit of a bugger up there with the old nameplate, isn't it? I do like this Rosemary. I think the look is correct. The... Uh, the attire is really good, but I think the entrance is one of the things that really makes it for me because she's just it just the entrance they seem to have really got the, the, the right idea with it. And then she's just staring the crowd down. This is gonna be a tricky one for Trish. I believe did Rosemary defeat Trish for the championship originally? Am I making that up, or is that true, or... I don't honestly know. Let's have a quick flick through my paperwork and see what happened. Over the edge, no. There wasn't anything there. Um, yes, it was. 
Trish Stratus was the former women's champion. Rosemary defeated her for that belt. And then Rosemary then went on to lose it a few weeks later at that uh, Thunder Invades Lucha Underground. So I think in this situation, you'd probably say that, that Rosemary must be in the best mental state because she knows that she can beat Trish. She already has once in the past. Butterfly suplex there taking Trish Stratus down. But really, it could go either way this one. Both these women are very equally talented. But I just wonder what effect Crazy Steve is going to have at ringside as well. Will Trish end up being distracted by Crazy Steve? Will he get involved in the match at all? Or is he just there for uh, for a little bit of mental support? Which is something that Rosemary needs. is a bit of mental support, eh? Drop toe by Rosemary. Drop on her face first. Bringing Trish back up to her feet. But Trish with that trip. Taking Rosemary down. Now back up to their feet. And there's a neck breaker by Trish. Again, bringing Rosemary back up to her feet. Locks it into the front chancery. Rosemary reversing, sending Trish face first into the mat. So yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking very soon we're going to have to have a little bit of a, a mix around on the rosters. At the end of this month, after Money in the Bank, we are going to be three months into the universe mode so we're going to be quite far in and i wonder whether we should uh, maybe mix and match a few of the rosters around um I, I like the idea of maybe doing some trades i think that might be a good thing to do is uh i mean that, that could be something that really opens up a little bit i think uh smackdown should be looking to try and bring in some more uh cruiserweights into their division since they are going to be having the cruiserweight championship going live uh, next week as well I remember that the the end of the Global Cruiserweight Championship next week. We're going to have a special pay-per-view card just based entirely on Cruiserweights for SmackDown. So definitely worth a watch that one. And we're going to try and bring people like Neville. Um, I was looking at Hideo Itami as well. But after some results that have come Hideo Itami's way over the last few weeks. I think it will be very difficult to take him away from Nitro at the moment. Um, guys like, uh, obviously we said earlier, Brian Pillman. Even Savio Vega. Again, people that could be involved potentially in the the cruiserweight division as rosemary now in control this match just dropping uh, stamping on the the knee of trish trish now takes rosemary into the corner up onto that top turnbuckle and trish with that frankensteiner style move which i know is one of her signatures or her finishes but i can't remember what it's called is, is that called the stratus faction by any chance I thought the Strauss faction was a springboard bulldog from the... You'll have to let me know that one in the comment section below just to make me... I know that she's got the Strauss faction and was it the chick kick? Um, and I know that's one of her signature manoeuvres, that, uh, that Frankensteiner style move. Rosemary in there with a great exploder suplex into the pinch. He goes one, two, and it's only enough for a two count. Both these women coming close now. It could really go either way. And now a complete shot there by Rosemary. Turning Trish over. What's she have planned here? She hooks the leg, but Trish kicks her away. Trish now bringing Rosemary away from the ropes. And Rosemary trying to make her back up to her feet. But Trish catches her into that short, sharp DDT. Overcastle there by Trish now bringing Rosemary back up to her feet. Again into the corner. Is she looking for an, another Frankensteiner potentially? Well, she looks the middle rope diving clothesline. Rosemary looking rocked at the moment. Can Trish continue the assault? Can she pull off the free count here as well? Great running clothesline by Trish now. Bringing Rosemary back up to her feet. Sending it into that corner. Can Trish continue the assault? Now taking Rosemary up onto that top turnbuckle. Is she looking for that move again? No, Rosemary fights her way free. 
Up to the top rope and a big double axe handle. And now Rosemary hooking the legs. Rolls it over and there's a sharp shooter. Dead centre in the middle of the ring, of course. Submissions don't necessarily work too well on this game, unfortunately. I have seen a couple of submission victories, but we haven't seen one for a very, very, very long time. It's still only enough, though, to bring a Rosemary a two count. Rosemary now just slamming the back of the head of Trish into the mat and looking to continue the assault as much as she can. And so far, Crazy Steve has not really been involved in this one. Not quite sure why. Um, I'm sure they're both set up as heels, so that, that should work. Of course, the winner of this match will go on to have a match against Sexy Star very, very soon for that Thunder Championship, be it next week or the week after. I don't think it'll be at Money in the Bank because we're already tied up with our six matches at Money in the Bank. But I'm sure we'll have it before Money in the Bank, probably next week or the week after. Trish now spinning Rosemary around. Rosemary, big kick, fighting her way out of the corner. And Trish now sending Rosemary into the corner herself. Is she going for that potential Frankensteiner again? Taking Rosemary up onto that top. I'm actually going to join her up there. She's going to go full on Frankensteiner. Rosemary crashes into the middle of the ring. Trish needs to pin her here. She can't, she can't leave time. Trish, big kick to the back of Rosemary. And she needs, to, she needs to pin her. You can't just hit a massive Frankenstein like that and then just leave her. You need to go for the pin. Even if you don't get the free count, you're still going to get some sort of mental victory on her, really. And then as Rosemary now hooks Trish in. Butterfly suplex. Dropping an elbow as well. Bringing Trish back up to her feet. And Rosemary looking for that exploder. Was that a T-bone? That's a T-bone suplex, isn't it? In for the pinch he goes. And this could be enough to make her the number one contender. And it's not. Still only enough just for a free count. Rosemary looking here for another potential sharpshooter. No, just kicking into the inside leg. Very painful move now, bringing Trish back up to her feet. Strength to the corner. Oh, and just taking Trish face first into that middle turnbuckle. What a vicious move by Rosemary there. Oh, a huge kick to the inside of the gut as well of, of Trish. Rosemary really showing her aggressive style, but Trish straight back up with that kick to the back of the head of Rosemary out of nowhere. Trish now bringing Rosemary back up to her feet. Trying to decide where to put her now, put her against that rope. And this is what I believe is the Stratisfaction springboard off the top rope with the Bulldog, and that is surely going to be enough to make Trish Stratus a number one contender for the Thunder Women's Championship one. Oh, and there's me saying Crazy Steve wasn't getting involved in this match. He just rips the referee out of the ring. That match was over there and then. There was no way that Rosemary was going to kick out of that. Trish now just DDT in the leg of Rosemary into the mat. Bringing Rosemary back up to her feet. Trish with the snapmare. And now just pushing the knee into the back and slowing the pace of this match down. Trying to regain a little bit of energy. It's been a it's been a pretty long going match, this one. And Rosemary now does look to be getting back up to her feet. Big elbow to the gut of Trish. And Rosemary needs to take advantage of, uh, of what Crazy Steve has done here. Rosemary into the pin after the knees to the back. 
and it's still only enough for a two count. Again, both ladies getting back up to their feet and Rosemary hooking her in. Another T-bone suplex and that could be enough, you know. That could be enough to cement Rosemary the number one contendership spot. One, two, and three and it is. And well done to Crazy Steve. That's all I can say because this match was done and dusted after Trish hit that stratisfaction. But Crazy Steve pulls the referee out of the ring. Oh, these are some crazy highlights that was, wasn't it? Yeah, Crazy Steve pulling the, the referee out of the ring. And that allowed Rosemary the time to uh, to get out of the pinfall and get back into this one. If it wasn't if it wasn't for Crazy Steve, then I think Trish would definitely be the number one contender here. But well done to Rosemary. She took advantage of what had happened. And she has cemented herself a place in a championship match in the next couple of weeks. Against, of course, the Thunder Women's champion, Sexy Star. There was the pin. One, two, and three. So well done to Rosemary. Um, celebration after the match doesn't quite suit. I've tried to find so many times where you change the celebrations on this game. I mean, you can change entrances and everything, but changing the celebration seems to be a bit more difficult. I don't know how to do it. There must be somewhere in the move set or somewhere like that to change it. Because this celebration really does not match Rosemary's style and character, does it really? And here's our second match of the evening. It's going to be the New Day, the tag team champions, taking on the Decay in a non-title match. Of course, these two teams have been feuding now for a few weeks. It'll be interesting to see just how tonight develops. And here we go. The New Day, like I said earlier on, have been the tag team champions now for an incredible amount of time. They've held the belts and since day one, I think, since this universe mode. They've had to defend them a few times, but nobody has quite come up with the goods. Nobody has quite been able to uh, to knock them off their perch so far in this universe mode. The Decay, of course, are hoping to be the team to do that. The first team to do that. Not going to be easy, though. These two guys have just been absolutely unbeatable. Uh, just trying to think who they actually have defending them championships against so far. Um, let's have a quick look. Let's have a gander. Let's have a goosey gander. Of course, they defeated American Alpha on the very first episode to win them. There's a few people we need to start using it a bit better as well, don't we? Because there's like... Um, uh, they defeated Blake and Murphy for them as well. Uh, fully loaded. They defended them against Blake and Murphy. Then I think after that, Blake and Murphy straight away went across to Nitro. Um, I think they defended him against the Revival. Yeah, I'm sure they defended against the Revival as well. So they've been, they're defended against three or four different teams now. So it'll be interesting to see how they got on against uh, the Decay. A completely different team to really what they're used to. And just trying, they've also defeated Enzo and Cass as well a few weeks back. And they defeated... Oh, they, they actually defend those championships at the uh, Thunder and Vase Lucha Underground, did they? Oh, they, they defeated the K last week, didn't they? They defe defeated the K two weeks in a row. They? No, they defeated the K last week. This is going to be their second tag team match against the K in two weeks. And the K will be hoping to pick up a victory here because they don't really want to end up with two losses in two weeks against the New Day. Especially, it's going to make New Day incredibly difficult to actually beat. Because they're slowly picking up more and more and more uh, momentum boosts and hot streaks. And the more that they can defeat the... The, uh, the more they can defeat the Decay, the stronger they're going to become. And the more difficult they are going to beat in the future. I always forget how long the entrance of Abyss is. Of course, this is the uh, the Undertaker and uh, Paul Bearer en entrance, which I think is the only entrance really on there that suits them, and I think it does suit them quite nicely actually. It's 
So the actual WWE have announced now that their draft is going to be taking place on the 19th of July, which is uh, the first live episode of SmackDown, which is okay. Uh, that sort of makes sense. But at the same time, it's only five days before the, um, the Battleground pay-per-view. So to me, that doesn't make a lot of sense because we know, obviously, the main event of Battleground pay-per-view right now already is going to be the Shield triple threat, which people want to see for a long, long time. A bit odd that they've done it at Battleground and not waited until SummerSlam. I thought SummerSlam, Shield, triple threat would have been the best way to go. They must have something else in mind for that. Um, but I suppose, yeah, they can't have it at SummerSlam because there's every chance that um, Ambrose, Rollins and Reigns will end up at different shows. From what I've been reading, I've read it quite a few times now, is that the idea is to have... Um, I think Ambrose was going to be across on SmackDown, and they were going to have Reigns and Rollins both over. Well, the idea was originally was to have Reigns as the main face and Rollins as the main heel for Raw. But at the moment, Reigns is just not drawing at all. He's, he's, he's not drawing at all, and that is rumoured behind one of the reasons why... He dropped the championship at uh, Money in the Bank. Uh, I've, I've read it quite a few times now that, of course, they they split their tour into two halves already anyway. One half of the tour has been led by Cena. No, one half of the tour has been led by Roman Reigns. Sorry, this is during the Cena injury. One uh, half of the tour has been led by Roman Reigns. One half of the tour has been led by Dean Ambrose. Uh, the Dean Ambrose tour generally goes to the smaller places, the smaller arenas and the smaller towns, and the Reigns one has gone to the bigger arenas with the bigger cities and stuff like that. And of course, it's always expected that the, the A Tour, the Roman Reigns Tour, is always expected to outsell the other tour because it's got the uh, it's going to the bigger places, it's got the bigger names, but that's not been the case for the last few months. The Dean Ambrose Tour has actually outsold the bigger tour, and that's uh, I think that's worried a lot of people in WWE. And I think that might be the reason why they've taken the belt away from Roman Reigns, because I was surprised... I thought Reigns was going to hold it for at least... Well, I've been saying at least till SummerSlam I thought he would hold it. Um, but I thought may, I thought probably Survivor Series. And evidently I was wrong. And it makes you wonder whether they are considering potentially changing their plans for the draft around. Because if Roman Reigns is not drawing as well as they were hoping, having him as the main face for Raw is not going to work. Especially since um, I've not actually watched Raw myself from, from this week. But I've read some... Uh, of the results, so from what I can understand, Reigns was acting very heel-like, telling the crowd to shut up and things like that, which is the best thing for him. Just put him to a heel, and it'll be fine. Yeah, but it's interesting to see exactly what happens. I'm just a bit shocked that they are going to do the draft, and then they have a pay-per-view five days after, because it's not going to allow you much time to to build up to the pay-per-view, is it? Really? Oh, crazy! Steve went for broke there. And completely missed Xavier Woods, who brings Kofi Kingston into the match. And I'm hoping one thing they do in the draft as well is they don't draft people individually. I want to draft tag teams. So I don't want them to go, oh yeah, I've got Xavier Woods, but you've got Kofi Kingston. What are we going to do with Big E? I, I want them to draft the New Day as a stable. I want them to draft uh, the Wyatt family as a stable. The only person I would consider leaving Wyatt family and going solo would be Luke Harper, but he's currently out injured, of course. So I really want to make sure that they draft tag teams as tag teams. What's the point in splitting tag teams? It ruined the Hardy Boys. It ruined the Dudley Boys in the, in the original draft. Splitting them onto the individual shows just did not work at all. So I don't think uh, I don't think splitting Enzo and Cass. I don't think splitting um, the New Day or Luke. I mean, there's, there's a rumor that splitting the Lucha Dragons could potentially happen because. WWE see a big future for Kalisto as one of their main, uh, one of their main uh, Mexican sort of stars going forward. But apart from them, I don't really want to see any of the other tag teams split up. We've already seen the primetime players go their separate ways. Would make much more sense for anyone else to go their separate ways, especially if they're considering having two separate tag team divisions, one on Raw, one on SmackDown. It doesn't make a lot of sense to split them up. And hopefully we'll see a few NXT guys in that draft as well. The rumour has it there could be Finn Balor. There could be um, American Alpha. Um, I don't know who else is actually planned in. I know I know those two. I don't know if Samoa Joe might be in, involved in that list as well. Considering that 
He is the NXT champion. I think if he wasn't the champion, he'd be one of the first names on the list. But since he is the champion, it makes it a little bit more awkward. Uh, not that it matters too much, of course. Kevin Owens did work both um, both WWE and NXT for a short amount of time before losing the championship to Finn Balor. So it'd be interesting to see who they line Samoa Joe up with for the next NXT TakeOver. and Because uh, it looks like it's going to be Nakamura versus Finn Balor is what they're teasing. Um, so also teasing Austin Aries versus No Way Jose. Which then doesn't leave anyone to go after Joe unless they're thinking of bringing in Bobby Roode or they're thinking of bringing in um, Eric Young. But I wonder now whether Bobby Roode and Eric Young might, if, if they're going to sign for WWE now, whether they might just make it straight into the main roster just as AJ Styles did. They're both used to work in TV. They know how TV works. It's not going to be a major problem for them. So just give them a few, a few weeks in NXT just to uh, understand where the cameras are placed for WWE and how WWE do things specifically, and then stick them straight in the main roster. No reason to put them in NXT. If you're looking for established stars to put into that draft, like they have been contacting people such as Carlito and Rey Mysterio and even Stephen Richards, apparently, they've, uh, they've contacted MVP. Uh, quite a lot of people, so it would uh, be interesting to see just who ends up in that draft as well, actually. I'm, looking for, I'm really looking forward to it, but of course it's still four weeks away now. As Abyss using his size and dropping... From that uh, middle rope a couple of times on Kofi Kingston. That's really going to just push the life out of Kofi Kingston. And Abyss is in firm control at the moment. And again, Abyss going up to that middle rope looking for another Vader bomb. And hits it again. Kofi Kingston's in trouble here. And again, Abyss... Are we, are we going to hit Deja Vu here? But this time Abyss does hit the big splash. And now Abyss goes in for the pin... Crazy Steve comes across and takes out Xavier Woods. And there we go. Decay get themselves a victory against the tag team champions, the New Day. And that is a huge victory, that is. A very, very important victory, that is, for, uh, for Decay. They didn't want to lose two weeks in a row, but actually defeating the champions in a non-championship match just shows what sort of level Decay are on as well. It shows they can beat these guys. So when we come round to Money in the Bank in a few weeks' time, we could end up seeing brand new tag team champions. That'd be pretty cool. There was the second Vader bomb. Followed up here by a big splash on the middle rope. And that was enough just to squish the life out of Kofi Kingston. And you see how quick Crazy Steve was across. But just as Xavier Woods came in, a great camera angle there. Just as Xavier Woods coming to the ring, Crazy Steve... With a crossbody taking him out. And there we go. Decay pick up a, a, a invaluable victory here. Against the New Day. And this could end up really being the spark that brings us brand new tag team champions at Money in the Bank in three weeks time. And here we go. Here is the rivalry update. Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods, I'm going to assume as well, have lost their hot streak. And they're just on a momentum boost now. Crazy Steve has gained a hot streak. And is on a double momentum boost as well. Xavier Woods again, like I said, lost his hot streak. And Abyss is on a hot streak and a momentum boost. So at the moment, it's looking pretty even now. Crazy Steve has got an extra momentum boost compared to Abyss. Because I think he did actually win a singles match a couple of weeks back. Um, but apart from that, it's looking pretty good for Decay. They've managed to uh, level out the status effects. And it's just now whether they can beat them in the ring once again at Money in the Bank. It doesn't matter if they beat them tonight or not. The big one is going to be Money in the Bank in a few weeks' time. Win there, we could have brand new tag team champions. And here's our next match this evening. It's going to be Matanza Kuwaito, the number one contender for the Thunder Championship, taking on Dolph Ziggler. And here we go. That Matanza's got a mouth, apparently. And here comes Hulk Hogan making his way down to ringside. Getting inside the head of Matanza Cueto. Of course, Matanza actually defeated Hogan last week on Thunder. Not only defeated him, he absolutely destroyed him from start to finish. Hogan looks like he's going to come out to do a little bit of scouting maybe. But he's really getting in the head of Matanza. Matanza just eyes on Hogan constantly. And I don't know whether this is a good thing for Hogan. I don't think it's a good thing for Ziggler at all. Ziggler's going to be in enough trouble as it is facing off against Matanza, but... When you face off against a pissed off Matanza, you could end up getting hurt <laughs> seriously here. And straight away Matanza with that big scoop slam. And of course, remember, like I said last week, he came out and he absolutely demolished Hogan, the Thunder champion. 
Maybe looking to the same here, but Ziggler so far trying to use his strength. And so far it's uh not his strength, sorry, his speed, Ziggler. What am I talking about? Matanz is the one with the strength. And he's showcasing it now. Big elbow against the top of the head of Ziggler. And once again, Ziggler using his speed to try and reverse it whichever way he can. And Matanza just pushing Ziggler away whenever he tries to get a hold of him. Ziggler just going for his quick strikes. And there's a drop kick as well. Yes, take a Matanza down. And that's something, I suppose, that, that Hogan's going to have to look at. Just using speed wherever you can. Because Matanza is very slow. He's very methodical. And he's very powerful. What a shoulder block. I think Ziggler might just get concussed from that shoulder block alone. Matanza now just rolling Ziggler away from the ropes and just stepping across the chest. Bringing Ziggler back up to his feet and now sending him into the corner. And now again, Hogan just getting the uh, attention of Matanza, who is in firm control of this match. And Matanza now coming out to join Hogan on the outside, right in each other's face, these two guys now. Well, and Ziggler's back up and a big right hand taking Matanza down. And Hogan like that. And it looks like Hogan's actually going to leave ringside now. He's done enough damage. He's done enough to uh, to distract them. Oh, straight into the apron there by Ziggler. Now locks in that headlock on the ground as well. And showing his agility once again. I don't necessarily think you should be cocky in this situation though. Again, Ziggler now just throw Matanza straight into the apron. And this is a bit of a, a bug in the game. I've seen it quite a few times now where somebody tries to bring somebody else into the ring and they just can't seem to straighten it out. Matanza back in the ring himself. And Matanza looks pissed, you know. But again, a complete shot there by Ziggler. And Ziggler lining Matanza up. What would a win here for Ziggler do for his career? Locking in a sleep hole. Now, I made the best idea to... To bring a guy like Matanza down. Just to try and choke the life out of him. Ziggler releasing the hold. Thinks it enough damage. Goes in for the pin. Trying to get the pin after choking the life out of Matanza. And he's done it. He's actually done it. Dolph Ziggler. So Matanza, the man who absolutely destroyed Hulk Hogan last week on Thunder. Destroying the champion has now come out here this evening and been defeated by Dolph Ziggler. Of course, Hogan had a, a little say in it, really, didn't he? He, uh, he was inside the head of Matanza from the beginning of the match. Uh, distracted Matanza at one point as well, allowing Ziggler to get back in control of the match. But uh, still, this is a massive, massive win for Ziggler. That's going to hoist him right up the championship rankings. And again, another man will have to look out for potentially pushing towards one of the championships or maybe one of the guys we can look at for a trade. Like I said, we're going to try and do some trades, probably after Money in the Bank, just to try and freshen some of the rosters up. And I'm thinking Ziggler might be one of those men that, uh, that look to move on somewhere. And here is the rivalry update. Rising tensions. Intensity between the champion Hollywood Hogan and Matanza Cueto after their confrontation. So Matanza was on a, uh, a hot streak um, and a momentum boost. It looks like he's lost his hot streak now. He's still got his momentum boost for now, though. And uh, Dolph Ziggler's gained himself a, a, hot be a hot streak as well. So maybe that'll help him uh, start to build upon this victory and uh, try and do a little bit better in his career mode because he's not done too well so far. And here is our main event of the evening. It's going to be our United States champion, Pentagon Jr., in the ring one-on-one -on -one with our number one contender for that championship, Dean Ambrose. And here we go. I think it would be good if they had actual breakout. Because I know they've got breakout entrances this year's game, haven't they? But it would be interesting if they actually had breakout entrances between the computer and the computer. Because I know at the moment, the only way to initiate a breakout is if it's person versus computer. So if they had it, like, just randomly. Like if, for example, right now Dean Ambrose was to come out and take Pentagon out. I think that would be pretty cool. But that's not something they've got in the game at the moment. Would be nice if they added that in for next year's game. So we don't know anything about 2K17 yet. All we know is that we have um, 
We have Ultimate Warrior. We have John Cena. We have Sasha Banks. We can probably guess 90% of the roster anyway. So it's not a major problem. But it would be nice to know some more details like who, what, what the showcase is going to be and uh, if they made any changes to Universe Mode. Because Universe Mode hasn't really had any major changes now for a long time. It's all been... It's all been quite like... It's all been improvements and it's been... Um, aesthetic stuff. There's been no real changes. There's been no nothing where you can say they've actually gone out of their way to really improve this mode. And it's the mode that I use the most. I don't really bother. I've not touched the showcase. I've not really touched my career mode in this as well either because I'm terrible at this game. So I have really just have played... The universe mode. I didn't play it, do I? Really, I, I record all the matches. So it'd be nice for me if there was some slight improvements in the universe mode. And we've, we've named quite a lot ourselves. I think one of the main ones that I'd love to see would be the uh, bringing back the story editor, but actually allowing us to mix the story editor into the universe mode. So actually creating a show and saying um, in this match there'll be this cutscene before the match, there'll be this cutscene after the match. And there'll be this that happens during the match. And then, then you can play the show and all the things that you put together will happen. I think that'd be the best way. That'd be a really cool way of doing it, I think. Because as much as the rivalry screen is great, I don't think it really... I don't think it really... Um, it's not fantastic. It does the trick, but it's just not fantastic. Great suplex to my pentagon on the outside on Dean Ambrose. Painful, painful move. Ambrose now dropping an elbow into the face of Pentagon. And of course, Pentagon Jr. won this United States Championship a few weeks back at Thunder Invades Lucha Underground. There was a four-man ladder match. And uh, it was Pentagon who came out on top of that one. It was between Bad News Barrett, who was the former champion... Um, Dean Ambrose was in that match as well. Pentagon Jr. and Drago was also in that match. Big kick to the back there by Pentagon once again. And he's a vicious man, is this Pentagon? I, I'm a massive fan of Pentagon. I'd, I'm not going to lie, I've not heard of him. I've not heard of a lot of the. The, the, the AAA stars before they moved into Lucha Underground, I must admit. But uh, Pentagon Jr. was just someone that everyone just fell in love with straight away. He is just such an incredible character. He's just got everything so sorted out. And he's so good in the ring. That's one of the main things is that everyone in this Lucha Underground are incredible, incredible wrestlers. And of course, well done to Dean Ambrose on becoming... The WWE Champion the other night as well. I must admit, I wasn't expecting that to happen. Normally, I can sort of foresee a lot of things that are going to happen in WWE because after a while, when you've been watching for so long, you start to you start to notice sort of um, trends and just the way that they do certain things. And for me, it was just a little bit. It was just a little bit. Of a, it was a little bit strange. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a bold move by WWE and they did it. And I think they probably did it because they needed to get rid of the money in the bank briefcase before the draft, I think. Because it probably would have made things a little bit more confusing. Two count there for Dean Ambrose. And I must admit, when, uh, when he came out with the briefcase... I was just convinced he was going to lose. I just don't know why. I just didn't think WWE were going to let him actually win the match. So I was I was so happy when he did actually win it. Because I was really happy when Seth won it. And then when Ambrose came out and cashed in, I just thought that's even better. But for me, I think the best part of, of, of that whole thing for me was um, was when Seth managed to reverse the... He reversed the spear into a pedigree, which I thought was incredible. I thought that was such a good thing to do. Great dive there by Dean Ambrose. I do love it when these guys do dives. And I'm so glad they've actually brought that back a bit more in the game. By using it as special moments like that. Because it does look so good when they actually hit it. I want to see some more. I want to see some more dives in next year's game. I want to see some uh, some more springboard stuff. Because they used to do a lot of springboards on last year's game. And they really cut them out this year. I don't know why. Ambrose. 
Ambrose now with the elbow to the face. Now hooked into the pin on Pentagon. One, two. It's only enough for a two count. And a punt to the back of Pentagon as well. Ambrose bringing Pentagon back up to his feet now. Sending him into the far turnbuckle. And brings him out to a huge clothesline. A lot of power behind that clothesline by Ambrose. He can't quite get on that top turnbuckle, can he? There's a lot of funny the funny ways that people act on this game. It, it confuses me sometimes. It really does. <laughs> it's like when somebody hits their finisher maneuver and they do the whole a couple of steps backwards and then they take two steps forward and then they go for the pin. It's like, why? Why are they taking two steps backwards and two steps forward? Did it make any sense? That was the same thing. I've seen it quite a few times. People just walk into corners. I don't know if they're trying to get up onto the top rope or... Or what they're trying to do. I think a few people are trying to trigger their finisher maneuvers. Guys like Nakamura do it quite a lot. Guys like Reigns do it quite a lot. But guys like Ambrose, he hasn't got a corner finisher, I don't think. So why he does it, I've got no idea. And big gut buster there by Pentagon. That could be enough. Well, Pentagon's not going to make it enough. He's going to go up and add some more damage. Big double foot stomp. Strain to the pin he goes. Would this be enough? For Pentagon to pick up the win here against Ambrose, it is a win for the United States champion Pentagon Jr. over the number one contender, Dean Ambrose. That's going to be a great win for Pentagon. Something very, very needed. Continue to build the momentum as he goes all the way through to Money in the Bank. And it's a shame that he won the United States Championship, actually, because if he hadn't done, then Pentagon would have been one of the prime people to potentially put in that Money in the Bank ladder match. But I'm hoping the game's going to be clever. I'm going to hope it's going to use guys like maybe Randy Orton or even Baron Corbin, even uh, even Cactus Jack, or just someone that we would consider ourselves as a potential number one contender. I don't want to see, I don't want to see like Blake and Murphy in the in the back ladder match or something like that. But this game, you know what this game's like? It's a bit crazy every now and again. Maybe if I adjust some of the championship rankings before the Money in the Bank pay per view, it might. Uh, it might persuade the game to put certain people in there ahead of certain others. Who knows? I'll try and I'll try and do something like that. I'll try and move some of the people around so they're all in the all the top people are in the top ten and stuff like that. And hopefully it'll only use those guys. I would imagine it's going to split maybe free Thunder guys, free Nitro guys, no, free Thunder guys, free Raw guys into that Money in the Bank ladder match. But who knows? Who knows with this game? And it was the big finale. The big double foot stomp there by Pentagon Junior. And that was enough for him to pick up the free count over the number one contender, Dean Ambrose. If he does that again in a few weeks' time, then Pentagon will successfully retain his United States Championship. So, everyone, that has been the end of this episode of Thunder. I hope you have enjoyed it. I've managed to get through it, even though I've got an abscess on my tongue and I can barely talk properly. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy about that. Uh, yeah, if you have enjoyed it, of course, please do hit that like button. It does really help me out. It makes the video easier for other people to find and helps grow the channel. And... The channel has been growing quite steadily now over the last couple of months, and I'd love to continue that on. I'd love to get up to 3,000 subscribers before we hit uh, 2K17, which is only it's only about 120 subscribers away, is it? No, no, it's not. It's about uh, that's about 500 subscribers away. So maybe we won't do that, but uh, but still, it'd be great if we can get as close as possible. Of course, if you are new around here, then you would like to add yourself to my subscriber list. That'd be absolutely fantastic. Uh, all are welcome. And uh, yeah, I've been Chevy Gamer. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow for our next episode of SmackDown, the last episode of SmackDown before the Backlash pay-per-view.